Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles and before we get started on today's battle since this is the first opportunity outside of Facebook that I've had to announce the news it was revealed at the end of yesterday's official World of Warships third anniversary stream on Twitch that they're introducing two new premium battleships into the game the first and last British battleships ever built HMS Dreadnought which is going to be a tier 3 premium and HMS Vanguard which is going to be a tier 8 premium. So yeah, I'm getting pretty stoked about that. But on with today's battle. Tier 10 battle, three player division. We have Modulatus in the tier 10 carrier, the Hakuru. We have Geo Brigade 95 here in the American tier 10 battleship, Montana. And we also have DDAC 26 in the German tier 10 battleship, the Grosser Kurfürst. Although this battle is more about Geo Brigade in the Montana and Modulatus in the Hakuryu, and not so much about DDAC 26 in the Grosser Kerr first, because he unfortunately does get eliminated relatively early. Now, this battle is going to last the full 20 minutes, so I am going to be snipping out some of the boring bits when there's not a lot happening. Like now, for example, where the only real interaction between the two teams is going on in chat. But as soon as first contact is made, with Modulatus's torpedo planes first spotting an enemy Des Moines and obviously giving that thing a wide berth, while the rest of his air groups scan the northern end of the map and see what they can see from there. And pretty soon, the aerial spotting done by the Hakuryu's fighter and strike squadrons is revealing a rather large haul of ships for the team to shoot at. Geo Brigade 95 looking for his first victim. Oh, hello there, Mr. Des Moines. Do you perhaps have time to stop and talk about our Lord and Saviour, 16 inch armour piercing? Spot a plane up. And this guy is actually getting shot at, not just by a Geo Brigade's Montana, but also by a Yamato and a Kronstadt. Which may go some way towards explaining the vicious spanking <laughs> that he just received. That is not the way you want to start a game in a cruiser of any description. And he's down, but he's not out. And Geo Brigade managed to fire without being detected, thanks to the island cover. Second set of shots out. Could this be the end for the Des Moines? He's trying to turn away. Uh, no. <laughs> so there's the first blood award. And Geo Brigade is already up to 47,000 damage done. This game's getting off to a pretty good start. And because he's using that island cover, he is still undetected. None of these ships actually have a direct line of sight to him. And just look at them all scattering like cockroaches caught in a flashlight. So many ships. Which one to shoot at? Well, with a choice of targets like that, you pretty much want to aim for whichever one is giving you the biggest broadside. You know, whoever you can do the most damage to with the 16-inch armor-piercing shells. But there are just so many to choose from. And while he's deliberating over which target to shoot at, the Des Moines perhaps, this is when disaster very, very nearly strikes. There's only one destroyer on each team, and it's just Geo Brigade's luck that the enemy destroyer is on this side. There are his torpedoes. And they weren't even aimed at him. He wasn't even spotted when they were launched. He's spotted now, of course, and this is where he gets two spots of good luck. First, the torpedoes run out of range, and secondly, even though he is now spotted and turning and giving broadside to a whole bunch of enemy ships, including at least one Yamato, the Yamato in particular had already fired before he became visible. And now he's ready to give the good news to that Seattle, who was moving forward slowly when he fired, but he predicted that the Seattle was going to try to reverse back into cover, aimed to the rear of the ship, and is rewarded with yet more damage, including a Citadel. He's now at 73,000 damage done. And he is starting to attract a bit of attention, particularly from the rearmost of the two enemy Yamatos over there, one of whom, there he is, has just chewed on a bunch of torpedoes. And judging by the shell tracers that he was firing, has Isoroko Yamamoto himself as the captain. But Geo Brigade wants to finish off that Seattle, who's almost managed to retreat into full concealment and unfortunately isn't able to finish the job, although he does score another 4,000 damage. Still a lot of potential incoming firepower from that side of the map, and, well, I'm not sure who that was, but it barely scratched the paintwork, and Geo Brigade is still looking to finish off that Seattle when it finally goes undetected. But then, 
Oh baby, it's the other Des Moines. And look at that, he is just begging for a paddling. Geo Brigade 95, only too happy to oblige. Shots out. Looking pretty good. Should be a paddling. Paddling denied. The Des Moines gets away with it. Personally, I think Geo Brigade was robbed. And he is starting to attract a rather large amount of unwanted attention over here, not least from the Des Moines. And you know how quickly that thing fires, and in the space of time it takes you to reload your guns, they can land five, six, maybe even seven. 203mm gun salvos, although Geo Brigade isn't attracting nearly as much attention as the Yamato over there, who is sailing into more or less exactly the same crossfire that just sank the Kronstadt on the team. There's the enemy midway. If only Geo Brigade's spotter plane consumable wasn't on cooldown, he would probably be able to give that guy a richly deserved paddling right now as well, but it is, so he can't. The Yamato is probably not going to last too much longer. Oh, hello. What's that down to the south? That's a very suspicious looking smokescreen that suddenly appeared for no good reason. Do you think there might be an enemy destroyer in it? Certainly could be. It could also be the enemy Minotaur smoking up in order to start unloading 152mm guns on the Yamato over there. But the Minotaur has already been spotted. He's all the way up the other end of the map. So that has to be the enemy gearing. Now, why has he left the smokescreen? And why is he now shooting? It was a perfectly good smokescreen. It was, but it was too far away for him to do anything other than launch torpedoes. I'm not entirely sure why the gearing used his smoke down there. It might have just been a case of fat fingers and he pressed the wrong button. But that Yamato, given broadside to a Missouri at point blank range like that, is not going to last much longer. And he's dead. And Geo Brigade 95 is now the only surviving member of his team on this entire flank. So that means he's next. And down to the south we have two Yamatos, a Seattle, a Missouri, a Des Moines, and a Gearing. So it's time for a fighting retreat. Let's see if that Des Moines is lucky enough to survive giving two broadsides to the same ship. And that would be a no. <laughs> That's what should have happened the first time. Yeah, those were almost certainly launched from the cover of the smokescreen down to the south. Again, I'm not entirely sure why the gearing bothered. He was undetected. There was nothing, there was no radar or anything. There were no aircraft in that location. I'm not entirely sure why he used the smokescreen, because he immediately abandoned it and started shooting. Might have just been a case of fat fingers. It happens. I've done it myself. I've accidentally fired off my radar when there are no enemy ships in range, when I've actually been meaning to hit the hydroacoustic search button. And of course it doesn't exactly help when you move from one ship to the next ship in progression and it gains a new consumable and suddenly the consumables are all bound to unexpected keystrokes. This is something that has actually been raised with the World of Warships developers. Uh, the ability to map your own keystrokes just for consistency. Now, that enemy Iowa is probably cursing his team right now because he was the only member of the enemy team down to the south who bothered to try to pursue Geo Brigade's retreating Montana. The rest are all still hiding behind the island. And Geo Brigade is not entirely alone on this flank. He is being backed up by Modulatus in the Hakuryu, who managed to get enough torpedo bombers through the Iowa's defensive anti aircraft fire in order to score a couple of hits and force him to turn broadside to the Montana's 12 16 inch guns. So that's another enemy battleship deleted. And Modulatus' usefulness to his teammates does not end there. Check out his fighters. They've just spotted the torpedoes launched by the gearing. And the torpedo bombers, now that they are no longer weighed down by their torpedoes, are now being used as scouts and have in fact spotted the gearing as well. It was a good torpedo launch from the gearing, as he takes a relatively minor spanking for his trouble. It was in fact a very good torpedo launch from the gearing, and if not for those fighters spotting them and giving Geo Brigade 95 enough warning, so that he only took one, and he took it on the torpedo bulges, and it didn't actually cause any flooding, if not for that, he would probably have been in serious trouble right now. Of course, he's not entirely out of the woods yet. That's still a lot of enemy ships down to the south, and he's the only thing with a gun strapped to it capable of doing anything about it. Oh, hello, Mr. Missouri. You've finally creeped out from behind the cover of that island. Well, so nice to see you. Welcome to the fight. How do you do? Do me a favour. Turn. 
Just a bit more. Go on. A little bit more. A little bit more. Come on, don't be shy. Your mother wasn't. Actually, that's just about perfect. Shots out. Pain train incoming. And while it could have been a lot worse, it could have been a lot better as well. Still, 23,000 damage, we'll take it. He's up to 142,000 damage. Done. Hakuryu dive bombers working over the gearing and retreating back over the top of Geo Brigade's Montana so its anti-aircraft guns can assist in swatting those fighters off their tails. But Geo Brigade has sustained a lot of high explosive damage so far and that will have knocked out a lot of his anti-aircraft guns. And if, like me, you've been wondering what exactly is taking the enemy midway so long to realise that there's an isolated top-tier battleship sitting alone and unprotected on this flank, then wonder no more. The first drop got scattered, but they still both hit. The second drop, not so much. It only cost the midway half a dozen aircraft, and while he is probably upset that he didn't actually sink to your brigade, he still got a pretty good result out of it. Meanwhile, Geo Brigade's team continues to crumble. They've just lost DDAC 26 in the Grosser Kurfurst to the Missouri that Geo Brigade hit earlier but didn't sink. There he is. I think he did just take a couple of torpedoes from Modulatus's strike aircraft. Couple of hits, disappointing, on the Seattle over penetrations and bounces. And in case you're wondering what the coloured tracer was, that's uh, Duke of Normandy on the enemy team in the surviving Yamato. And the coloured tracer indicate that he has Yamamoto Isoroku as his captain. So that's the unique Japanese captain. And you really don't want to mess around with him. The enemy Missouri, on the other hand, appears to be dead in the water. While it's not a great angle, and you probably shouldn't be expecting too much damage, some damage is better than none. Uh oh, dive bombers incoming. It looks like Midway's coming back to finish the job. And damage control is on cooldown, although it's going to be back up reasonably soon. Meanwhile, that Missouri, it's like every time Geo Brigade looks at him, he suddenly turns and starts giving the broadside. All right, well, you know, it'd be churlish to refuse. Paddling it is. Bang, got him. But here come those dive bombers. His damage control is back up, but he does not have a huge amount of health. His remaining AA guns open up, but his plight has not gone unnoticed. Modulatus in the Hakuryu to the rescue once again. There go the fighters. That interception will have scattered the drop, but it's this strafe coming in from the second fighter squadron that's sealing the fate of those dive bombers. A couple of them got through, but the drop was scattered and did no damage, and this should have been a paddling of epic proportions for the midway. It's only the rear turrets, but it's six 16-inch armour-piercing shells, one direct hit, slap-bang in the middle of the midway's flight deck, and it ricochets and does no damage. Yes, really. And while Geo Brigade is struggling to deal with the injustice of it all, Modulatus in the Hakuryu is executing a pretty damn nice triple torpedo drop on the gearing over there. First drop misses, but forces him to turn. One torpedo hit from the second drop. Modulatus trying to steal the kill for the Kraken, but it's the third drop that finishes off the gearing. That was only two of Geo Brigade's turrets, however. His two front turrets are loaded for bear, and the midway is in range. But he doesn't fire immediately, and I suspect he's doing that for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, he's waiting for the rear turrets to load so he can give it to the midway with all 12 of his 16-inch guns. There are now only three of them left against six enemies, so if he's going to take this shot and give his position away, he wants to make sure it counts. And he's waiting for the midway to maybe give him a better target. Yeah, it looks like that's it. Okay. Seconds out, round two. 16-inch guns versus midway. And we have ding ding, two bouncers <laughs> so far, and one over penetration for barely 1400 damage. I mean, seriously, when did American carriers start getting armored flight decks? Well, they really, really need to start eliminating enemy ships, and that Seattle still isn't dead. And there's a whole bunch of ships there to shoot at, but it's only going to take one armor-piercing shell, even if it over-penetrates, to finish off the Seattle. 
Granted, most of those shots are probably going to clip the island. But the Seattle knows. And damn, but that was close. And just to add insult to injury, the Midway is coming back for a third time with his torpedo bombers to finish off the job. But Modulatus in the Hakuryu is perfectly aware of this. He has vectored fighters to intercept. And speaking of the Midway, what the hell? He's now 10 kilometers away from a Montana. All right, come on, third time lucky. Shots out. Let's see what this Midway's made of. Right, it's not made out of armored titanium after all. There's the Confederate award. Over 200,000 damage while he didn't sink the Midway. The gearing is now giving him his undivided attention as well. And there has been a torpedo drop, which is forcing the Midway to turn and give broadside. Come on, this has to be the Kraken. I mean, at this kind of range. Nobody gets that lucky four times. There it is. Finally, some justice. The gearing's been forced to smoke up. Probably to avoid attack from the enemy torpedo bombers. Geo Brigade is down to 21,000 health. He's under fire and he doesn't have any heals left. But there's another beautiful airdrop coming in from Modulatus and the Hakuryu. Watch this. Des Moines and Kronstadt shots out at the Des Moines. Right in the middle of that cross drop, which hits them both. Doesn't sink either of them, but here come the 16-inch shells. Gotcha. Des Moines eliminated. Kill number six. Kronstadt hit by torpedoes, but not flooding. Now watch this. Rear turrets only. Six 16-inch shells. Launched in the direction of the Kronstadt. Start swinging the ship around. The Seattle, by some miracle, is still alive. Everybody's shooting at the gearing and the smokescreen, which means either that guy or the Kronstadt currently have him radared. Well, if it was the Kronstadt, the gearing no longer has to worry about being spotted. The front turret shots out at the Seattle, brackets him. That guy is living on borrowed time, but the rear turrets are almost ready to go. Shots out with the rear turrets. And let's just make sure of this. Starts swinging the ship around. Unloads with the front turrets as well. Oh, and it's just as well because the rear turrets missed. Oh, hang on, he's on the border. Get the ship turned around. And it's actually the dive bombers from Modulatus as a courier who finish off the job on the Seattle. Although one of those final 16 inch shells did smack the wreck of the Seattle dead center. So that would probably almost certainly have been an eighth kill for Geo Brigade in the Montana. As he's now struggling to get off the border because he's a sitting duck for the enemy Montana who luckily is paying zero attention to him, has been utterly focused on trying to take out that gearing, and is now presenting a fairly juicy target himself. Oh, how good's this gonna be? Pretty good. <laughs> Not great, but pretty good. And there's the high caliber award with 244,000 damage done. But he did succeed in eliminating the gearing, which means the enemy team are now ahead on points. Not by much, but you only have to be ahead by one point to win the match when the timer runs out and there's less than two minutes to go. That was kind of disappointing. Geo Brigade has to start swinging the nose of the ship around. And not just because the Montana's shooting at him. The Yamato is also in firing range. I'm assuming at this point that Geo Brigade was saying to Modulatus, I can handle the Montana, you send your torpedo bombers after the Yamato, because that's pretty much exactly what Modulatus is doing. But with shots out at the enemy Montana, Geo Brigade starts to get kind of unlucky. Or perhaps not, because while he didn't sink that Montana, he did knock out one of his forward 16-inch gun turrets. And the enemy Montana, perfectly aware that if he were to swing the ship around at this kind of range to get his rear turrets firing, he's going to die. He uses his damage control to get both of his forward turrets up again. Geo Brigade fires again, still doesn't kill the Montana, but knocks out one of those forward gun turrets again. And it's this that forces the enemy Montana to finally giving Geo Brigade a broadside target at point blank range so he can get those rear turrets around before Geo Brigade reloads. Unfortunately for him, he wasn't quite quick enough. And that's kill number eight. And now with 23 seconds left to go before the end of the match and Geo Brigade's team ahead on points, the enemy team can still win if that Yamato manages to sink Geo Brigade. Because sinking a battleship in standard battle 
would earn 40 points for the enemy team and penalise Geo Brigade's team by 60 points. But with the Montana dead, nobody's spotting Geo Brigade anymore, which means the Yamato doesn't have anything to shoot at. Modulatus in the Hakuryu and Geo Brigade in the Montana. 10 of the 12 ships on the enemy team sunk between the two of them. I don't think I have ever seen a harder carry in World of Warships in three years of covering this game. Guys, my hands were shaking just watching. <laughs> I can't begin to imagine what it must have been like for you two actually playing the game at the time. Well done. Everybody else, I hope you enjoyed it. Because that's it for today. And as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.